Hi, this is the first of a number of Revit tutorials I'm going to create. Um, I'll just show you the building that we're going to uh, end up with, hopefully after just uh, two sessions. Okay, we've got a symmetrical plan building, partitions breaking up inside, uh, windows, uh, curtain walling for larger windows, exterior and interior doors, uh, we've got columns placed on grid lines and a staircase taking us up to the first floor. If I have a look at the 3D view here, you can see it's nothing too fancy. Uh, it's really just to, to get you used to the, the kind of the way the software operates. And in later tutorials, we'll, we'll start to look at things in a bit more detail for each, each particular element. Okay, so I'll just close these files and then we'll start by going to projects, new, and we'll use the architectural template. Okay, I'm going to uh, set the viewport here so that it's, it doesn't, it isn't maximized. Just so that when I call up a 3D viewport, I'm not having to kind of toggle, I can uh, kind of stack them side by side if I need to. Okay, the markers that you can see here on this level zero plan are basically your elevation markers, north, east, south, west. And we're, we're just going to get stuck straight in. Uh, the properties panel, this is for you to make changes to the, uh, to the items that you add in. Um, and the browser down here is basically a, a kind of a access to the file system of the particular file you're in at the moment. So it's it's like a database of everything that you've you've got in this particular file. Okay, some of the items you've used, some of them you won't have used, but it's it just contains everything. Okay, let's go straight up to to create a wall. Okay, I'm going to start with walls, and then I'm going to add a floor after that. So it's offering me a, a, a one of the the this this kind of standard walls that are in the software out of the box. Now these are probably American in nature, not necessarily uh, European, but uh, just to get you used to the software we'll just use the ones that it offers. Later on we can start devising our own or editing these to suit. So the default wall here is cavity, 102 millimeters of brick on the outside, 75 millimeter cavity that's insulated, that's what the I stands for, 100 millimeter lightweight block work that's 100 LWT and then a plaster finish on the inside so that's the P. Okay so we go over the drawing I'll activate the plan and then this is the the panel that you're actually going to use to, to create the shape of the wall so let's start off with a rectangle okay I'm going to line the, the top of the rectangle with the kind of axis across the middle there. So I'm just clicking and dragging and it's roughly 20 by 10. Okay, and I want to make that more accurate now. So uh, what, I, what I'd like to do is is not what I've actually done there. So I'm going to just step back and what I want to do is, is, is set the wall, give it a few of these parameters already. Um, the height at the moment is unconnected so let's set the height to, to go as go up to level 1. Okay wherever level 1 might be at the moment okay it doesn't matter just yet we'll, we'll deal with the side side view later. The, the location line the, the placement line I'd like to use the uh, core face interior. Uh, this means that when I, when I can generally my areas will be reasonably uh, finalized. So core face interior. Okay, and then I'm using the rectangle here. So let's just do that shape again. Okay, roughly 20 by 10. Okay, that involves a click, hold, then click again to finish the rectangle. Now, let's get the modify cursor. Okay, and we'll set this to be a bit more of a, an accurate size. So 
click on a wall that reveals the distance from the other vertical wall and I can click on that size and change it and I'm going to change it to 20,000 I'm going to click on this wall and it will then I can change its distance from the other horizontal wall and I'll make that 8,000 okay so I've kind of just rounded up the, the size inside the walls I'm going to take this wall away so just click it once and press your delete key so we get this kind of open-ended u-shape now before we go too far let's just zoom in and have a wee look so I'm just rolling the middle mouse button and having a look at what what I can see here the hatch pattern seems to be correct I've got a double line here indicating brickwork and a kind of a crisscross attempt here representing the uh, blockwork now just to make sure the walls are facing the right way before I go any further I'm going to check the 3d view so in the project browser expand 3d views and double click 3d and this shows me a standard 3d view if you hold shift and you hold your middle mouse button you can rotate that so that's shift and middle mouse and there I can see that the color of the brickwork and the hatch pattern on the brickwork is facing outwards the walls going the right way so I'm going to close that now okay this viewport at the moment is set to a scale of 1 to 100 so it's it's not trying to show all the detail it's doing what you would do by hand you wouldn't show everything if you were drawing it by hand at 1 to 100 if I change that to 1 to 10 and zoom in you can see there's much more detail showing now including the the actual thickness of the plaster on the inside of the wall okay now I can see this detail because I've got a detail setting here set to fine if I click on that and change it to coarse it just hides all the detail it's all still there it's just not visible back to fine we'll keep it at that and I'll just stick with 1 to 100 just now until I get the final shape of the walls okay I want to introduce a bit of interest into this wall so I'll go back to my wall so it's my still the same type of wall type and I'm looking for the midpoint so I'm using the object snap here that's picking a midpoint I'm going to come across by 3000 so I can set my direction I can try and slide until I get the numbers right if I want to or I can just type in the distance I want so I'm going to go across 4000 and then down 3000 and then I'm going to go on a, a gentle diagonal to this corner here so it's picking up an endpoint then press return zooming out just rolling the middle mouse button okay I'll modify I'm going to take away this wall and then I need to tidy up the junctions here and I can use trim extend to do that so trim extend you pick the two lines you want to connect cleanly and do the same over here because this junction is pretty messy if I click the two walls joins it up tidy okay now to get my symmetrical building I need to flip this stuff over to the other side using the mirror command now I could select because there's nothing much else here in the in the drawing I could just select by grabbing everything so I modify and grab everything another way to do that if you if you're dealing with something like walls I press escape there to clear that is to hover over a line doesn't matter which one hover over a line press the tab key once that then highlights all the walls that are connected and then left click once but click and hold if you click and hold you'd be able to move it if it's just a case of selection then no need to click and hold okay I've got two options with the mirror commands if there's a point I can pick then pick axis is okay if it's a line or a, uh, in this case an endpoint otherwise you might have to draw the axis effectively using a kind of a temporary line so I'm going to use this version just now 
and if I go over the end of the wall a very very small blue dash appears so I click and hold just move to the side and click again and that finalizes the command okay now these two walls aren't actually connecting properly so I'll take these two away and then use my trim extend to unify things again make it nice and clean okay so that's the basic shape of the the enclosure I want to move on to adding a floor now and I found this fairly problematic so uh, excuse the the kind of methodology here because it's it is a bit contrived what I'll do is I'll create the boundary for the floor finish the floor but then re-edit the boundary straight away and it's the only way I've found this to work whether it's something I'm doing or some setting in my machine I'm not too sure but it gives me the result I want and lets me carry on adding some partitions afterwards so I go back to the architecture ribbon and then I'm looking for floors so I've got my floor button here and I want to add an architectural floor and because this is level zero of the building effectively the ground floor I'm going to use a ground bearing concrete floor I'm going to use a steel floor for the upper one or I could use this beam and block um, but ground bearing concrete obviously suits a ground floor situation okay now you could draw around the perimeter of the the, the wall uh, alternatively you can select the walls now with this 1 to 100 setting I can't really see enough detail to make sure I'm picking the right position so I'm going to change to 1 to 10 and that way I can look a bit closer at the walls as I pick them because there is this possibility that I might pick the wrong line okay I've got a tick on here extending to wall so that should allow me to to, to get the right position with a with a concrete floor slab it should really go in line with the face of the block work not the face of the plaster the plaster comes on after the wall and the floor are built so let's see how we get on with this I'm picking the command and this line is lighting up just a bit it's not very strong okay now the double lines here indicate a direction if this were a, a kind of a beam floor it would indicate which way the beams are running but because this is a slab that doesn't occur okay now you can see it's it's kind of going to the right place it's because I've got this extend into wall button ticked it's it's going into the right kind of line on the wall okay there's a bit of wall line left left sitting there okay we're going round the perimeter picking the lines fair bit of zooming in and out here just to make sure you get the right line it's pretty important now using this pick wall button means that the the wall edge sorry the floor edge will remain attached to the walls so if I move the wall the floor adjusts as well if you just use the the, the line tool or the other ones then it's not going to to remain attached to the wall which it, I understand you can't reattach it later on so it's better to do it now okay now I'm happy with that perimeter so I'm going to finalize it okay but actually I'm going to re-edit the boundary straight away and this way it should let me do what I want to do next so I'm editing the boundary I'm going to take away one of the lines and then recreate that line so I'm going back in picking the line then finalize the wall finishing my edit mode finishing the sketch click off the floor and I'm just going to do a quick test now to add a partition just a rough partition anywhere just to make sure it works so on the architecture ribbon I want a wall but I want to use a different type of wall 
So I drop the arrow down here and I'm looking for PARTN P100P, which means it's plaster, 100 block work, plaster. Okay, and I'm just going to draw a line from the middle of that wall upwards and back down just to test things are working okay. Press return. Good. Now the wall lines have stayed black. This is the, the issue I'd been having. The walls, it was the floor edit mode was re recurring in the background and wouldn't give up. So I'm happy to proceed now. So I'm going to select these partitions and delete them. Right, so the floor plan has got its uh, floor slab. So let's just check that that's there. Okay, I can see the walls and I hover over here. I can see a floor slab. It's ready to go on to the next step. So we're going to stop the, stop the video just here and then pick up in the second part.